So lying down, tilting your knees from side to side. And I wanted us today to have quite, a, I suppose, quite a calming class. And this was maybe I was talking to B at the beginning of class about how I'd completely, I think on Wednesday this week, I'd overdone it in terms of social things, which obviously isn't that much at the moment and felt completely overstimulated. So I think with these changes, I then felt on Thursday, I wanted to do this really calming yoga practice. And so that's, that's sort of what our class is based on today. Just, yeah, as we're <laughs> emerging from lockdown, how, how it can all feel a bit overwhelming. You know, it's good, but... I think then in our yoga practice, we just need this sort of quiet calmness. So what I'd like you to do now is we're going to bring our attention to our breathing. You can settle your legs down. You could lengthen them out if you prefer. And bring your hands to rest on the front of your body. So what we're going to do is have these little focuses for our breath. Um, these are from Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk, who I know some of you, you know. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have a couple of these little focuses throughout the class. And the first one is very simple. So hands resting on the front of your body, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And stay with that for a few cycles of breath. So you can be repeating those words to you you could to yourself, or you could just be as you're breathing in, saying in, as you're breathing out, saying out. Or you don't even have to use the words. You could just keep your awareness with the breath. So breathing in, knowing you're breathing in, breathing out, knowing you're breathing out. So perhaps two more cycles of breath lying here quietly with this focus, breathing in, I know I am breathing in, breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And we'll be coming back to this focus both in some sort of quiet postures and also in some movement. So what I'd like you to do now is to fold your knees into your chest. And you can hold around your knees and do a bit of rocking from side to side across the back of your body. That's nice. Good. And again, just find a movement that feels easy and comfortable and enjoyable. So you can do a bit more rocking across the back of your body and you can also, whenever you want to, pause in the center, take your arms and legs up to the ceiling, give them a bit of a shake out. Very nice. Lovely. And then from here, we're gonna come over onto hands and knees. We're gonna to start to move through a sequence. Um, it's gonna be sort of, yeah, quite familiar things. And we'll be at times coming back to this focus on the breath. So the first thing we're going to do is some cat movements on hands and knees. Now, some of you have got socks on, you might want to keep them on for a bit. We will be coming into dog, but not immediately. So on hands and knees, let yourself arrive and then start to do your cat movements. So rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine to the floor. And so for the first perhaps two or three cycles of cat, focus on the movement and just how does cat feel in your body right now, today. And then start to come back to that focus. So in cat, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. And you're not trying to coordinate your breathing with your movement in any way. It might happen, but rather you're keeping on moving in cat, but you're making your breath, your sort of, I suppose, your main focus. So you're still feeling the movement of your body, but your breathing is your main focus. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. 
breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And do that for two or three more cycles of breath. In and out. And then from a rounded up cat, so rounding your back to the ceiling, staying rounded, you're going to rock your hips back over your heels and come into child pose just for a couple of breaths and letting your body settle on the ground, feeling the movement of your breath through your body. And from child pose, you're going to come into kneeling. Now, if you're not happy sitting over your heels, you can be an up, you can either sit on a cushion or you can be an up kneeling. So I was going to suggest you sit over your heels if you're comfortable. And we do a kneeling twist from side to side. But if you're not happy sitting on your heels, you could be an upright kneeling and just swinging your arms. So it's up to you. I always find if I'm sitting on my heels, I like to sort of, you can swing your arms, but I quite like to come in just for a couple of breaths and do that to each side. Now, I'm afraid the next thing might mean socks off if you've got socks on. So you're going to be coming onto hands and knees and lengthening each leg back behind you. So I think we had that amazing warm weather earlier in the week and um, I was like, oh, this is it. This is... This is the summer, and of course, it was the warmest day of, in March for 53 years. <laughs> I think it was obviously a bit premature. I was just about half my summer was sort of Wednesday, freezing cold, and that's continued into today. Good. So, when you've lengthened each leg out behind you, you're then going to come into dog pose. So, settle your hands on the floor. Tuck your toes under, exhale, rocking up and back into dog. And this first dog is very much just about um, the physicality of dog and how does your body feel? We probably then notice all the tight places. So it could be the back of the legs, could be the upper back between the shoulder blades. So generally the solution in dog pose is to bend the knees more. <laughs> bend the knees more, that's it, that's nice, Hannah, good, good. So it could be bending one knee at a time, or it could be bending both knees and sending your pelvis back. Also that feeling of resting down through the arms, big hand prints. Lovely. And whenever you've had enough in this dog pose, again, fold down into child pose, just for a couple of breaths again. So in child pose, give yourself a moment to feel the contact of your forehead on the floor to let your elbows rest down. And then in your child pose, you're going to slide your hands further forwards on the floor so your elbows come off the ground. And then if you come up onto hands and knees, you're in this long hands and knees position where your hands are further forwards than your shoulders. And you're going to be doing then a little bit of rocking towards face up dog, but don't be too um, eager to get there because we're gonna come back to this um, throughout. We're gonna do this little sequence three times. So this is perhaps just this sort of easing ourselves forwards, maybe not into a full face up dog, unless it feels very easy. Okay, so perhaps more rocking forwards just once or twice more. And we'll develop this as we go further through the sequence. Okay, and then sit back onto your heels and give your hands a shake out. And you could bring the backs of your wrists together if you like. Good. So we're gonna go through that sequence again, coming back onto hands and knees. So when you're ready, back on hands and knees, back to your cat movements, rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine to the floor. Coming back to that focus on the breathing. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In 
and out. And in your own time, from a rounded up cat, keeping your back rounded, you're going to rock your hips back over your heels into child pose and settle in child pose just for a couple of quiet breaths. So you're not necessarily doing that focus of in and out, but you're feeling the movement of your breath in your body. And from child pose, moving on to kneeling, you can, I think you're all happy sitting on your heels. And in kneeling, coming back to your kneeling twist. So turning in one direction, having a couple of breaths. We're particularly thinking in our kneeling twist of how does it feel in the spine between the shoulder blades? Can we move into some of that tightness there as we turn in each direction? Coming on to hands and knees, lengthening each leg out behind us, tucking our toes under. We're going to be coming into another dog pose. In this time in dog pose, I thought we'd use that sort of big sighing breath. So we're focusing on using our breath to help release the tension in our body. If your body feels fantastic in dog, then you don't need to worry so much about that. So coming into your dog pose, oh, big sort of sighing breaths oh, through your mouth. Oh, and particularly, of course, bending the knees, bending one knee at a time. And I was thinking particularly those big sighing breaths in dog. They always really help me to release around my shoulders a bit. That's nice. Yeah, any little wiggling movements you want to do in dog are, of course, very helpful. <sighs> and from your dog pose, you can have another few breaths there, but from your dog pose, you can fold down into child pose, have a couple of quiet breaths in child. So when you come into child pose, again, let your forehead, let your elbows rest on the floor. Just feel the weight of your body settling down, feel the movement of your breath freely. And then again, slide your hands forward so your elbows come off the floor, your forehead could still touch the floor for a moment. And then come to hands and knees. So again, we're in this long hands and knees position. We're doing that rocking forwards towards face up dog. Again, it might feel you don't want to go all the way or it might feel a little bit easier this second time. We're going to do one more cycle of the sequence and we'll have a different way into face up dog for this last cycle. But this time, just carry on with this rocking forwards and back. If it feels comfortable to stay in a face up dog for a couple of breaths, I'm slightly undecided whether I'm comfortable yet, you can do that. And then rock your hips back over your heels. Sit in kneeling for a moment. Shake your hands out. Okay, so one last time we're going to go through the sequence with just some variations at the end and face up dog. So this time when you come to hands and knees and come to cat, just do cat without adding in that little focus for your breathing. Just see how it feels to be moving in cat pose. So in a way, coming back to having the sensations of your body in the forefront of your awareness. How fluid does your movement feel in cat? Rounding your back to the ceiling. Dipping your spine down to the floor. Can round your back to the ceiling and then rock your hips back over your heels. Back into child pose. And then in this child pose, I'd like you to come to that focus for your breath. So how does it feel in this child? Maybe just for two or three cycles of breath to come to that focus, breathing in. I know I am breathing in, breathing out. I know I am breathing out in and out. And 
and then once more walking your hands in towards you, coming to sit in kneeling, coming to do your, your twist. And you could this time, if you like, swing your arms from side to side a few times and then stay in the twist. So it's always helpful to try the variations. So staying in the twist, having a couple of breaths, seeing how it feels. Can you let your shoulders drop? How does it feel in the upper back? and then turning the other direction. And again, a couple of breaths. We'll come to hands and knees as we have been doing. Lengthen each leg back behind us. Now this time when you come to dog pose, I would like you to come to that um, focus for the breathing, the Thich Nhat Hanh breathing in, I know I'm breathing in, and just see how that works in dog pose. It may, depends how your dog pose feels at this point. So tucking your toes under, coming into dog pose, you might want to start by just settling yourself in, you know, focusing on the physicality of dog. And then how does it feel to make your focus your breathing so not doing anything to your breath but feeling it breathing in i know i am breathing in breathing out i know i am breathing out and it might not feel easy or the right thing for you to be doing now so you can always you know sometimes when i'm in dog my nose feels a bit blocked up and i want to breathe through my mouth or exaggerate that breath just see how it is. And again, you can come back into child pose whenever you're ready. And particularly if that focus was difficult in dog pose, when you come back to child, then come back to that focus of breathing in. I know I am breathing in breathing out, I know I am breathing out in your child pose. Or even if you prefer in. And from child pose, this time come up onto hands and knees without sliding your hands forwards. Because what I'd like you to do in hands and knees is do some tail wagging movements. So we've done a lot of cats. So this time come to wagging your tail from side to side. And we're going to use these move tail wagging movements to go back into child pose. So we can do that. We can wag our tail from side to side back into child. And then once you're in child, you can slide your hands forwards a bit. And then you can wag your tail from side to side, forwards into face up dog. So in your own time, moving forwards into face up dog and back into child pose through the side to side fluid movement, wagging our tail backwards and forwards and just see how that feels. I always find this is a good way to be in face up dog because it's sort of sneaking you in. Sneaking you in, we get there by going side to side and left. Maybe it feels a little bit better. Maybe you find there's a face up dog you can stay in. Make sure your shoulders are down away from your ears. And that's it. And then when you've had enough face up to do another one, you can. Otherwise, just a couple of quiet breaths in child pose because we'll be coming up into standing in a moment. So settle yourself in child and maybe just not having any, any particular focus rather than just being in child and settling yourself in child. Yes, just being. And what presents itself to you when you're in child, what comes into the field of your awareness in terms of your body, in terms of your breath. 
you in terms of your thoughts or feelings? And so in your own time, you're going to be making your way through one more dog pose and a forward bend into standing. But give yourself time to see how the dog pose feels. Because when I was practicing this yesterday, this was the, ni <laughs> this was the nicest dog pose that I did. It was coming into dog, again, with no agenda of just, you know, how is dog pose? How does it feel to be there? And if it's you're not, I'm not guaranteeing that it will be an amazing dog. But if it is, you know, give yourself time to see how does it feel? And if it does feel enjoyable, then staying there. If it doesn't feel so enjoyable, then you could be walking your hands on into your forward bend and see how that feels. And we're going to be doing several forward bends from standing. So you don't need to stay long in this forward bend unless, again, it feels particularly good. And you can sink into your heels and roll up into standing. So a bit like dog pose, I always find, you know, the more forward bends I do, the more enjoyable they get. So up in standing, we're going to start swinging our arms. Just, yeah, loose, easy movement. So in standing, we're going to work, I suppose, with a couple of, with a bit, a bit more sequences and a bit more focusing in on our breathing. A few more times, swing your arms, let your feet come along, just enjoying the feeling of the whole of yourself in movement. And in a moment we will, I'm quite enjoying this, but in a moment we will let it go, we will settle in standing. So settle, you can look down at your feet, have your feet a little distance apart, have your feet parallel, settle your feet on the floor. And then stop looking at them. You could do a little bit of swaying from side to side, letting your arms hang. You could close your eyes if you like. I don't know. Sometimes I think when we're at home in class, it, we really, I often find I really need to close my eyes just to, you know, be on my own. But if we're at home on our own, we might not find it so necessary. So from swaying, see if you can settle in. Tadasana, mountain pose. And then bring a hand onto your chest and a hand onto your belly. And it might be helpful at this point to close your eyes because we're going to come to our breathing here. So just for a few cycles of breath, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. in and out. And then whenever you're ready from here, you're going to use an exhalation to fold down into a forward bend, just quite easy, sinking your weight into your heels, bending your knees as much as you like. and have a couple of breaths there. If you feel compelled to go on into a squat for your lower back, by all means, you can do that. It might just be that you bend your knees a little bit more, rest your chest on your thighs. Have another breath, another couple of breaths in your forward bend. And then in your own time, exhaling, rolling back up into standing. You're going to bring your hands in front of you in prayer pose. You're going to, that's it, hands in front of you in prayer pose. Let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Drop your shoulders away from your ears and then start to swing your arms, crossing them in front of your body. So yes, if you're going to hit, I don't know, if you're going to hit something in your room, then obviously adjust yourself so you're not going to do that. So I'm crossing one arm and then the other arm on top. 
Now, you're going to, in a moment, from here, give yourself a hug. It doesn't matter which arm's on top. So we're going to come to another focus for our breathing, which we're going to be exploring a little bit more in the rest of the class. So with your arms hugging you, it means maybe you've got a hand or two on your rib cage. Now, breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. So just again for maybe three cycles of breath, how does it feel to have this focus? Breathing in deep, breathing out slow. And with the hands on the rib cage here, it might be helpful in terms of feeling this deep inhalation, feeling the ribs widening. And as you exhale, slowly letting your shoulders drop down away from your ears. And then release your arms and once more go down into a forward bend on your exhalation, letting your head go, letting your arms go. So again, forward, if we're thinking about this sense of calming, if, you know, if like, like I was saying, you've been overstimulated by um, the possibilities that the easing and lockdown offers, forward bends are very calming. We can bend our knees to make them more calming, but this feeling of giving our arms and our head to the ground, feeling anchored through the heels and the rest of the footprint. Let a breath come in as you exhale, rolling back up into standing. When you arrive in standing this time, give your legs a little shake out. And then settle your feet. When you give your legs a shake out, settle your feet back down a little distance apart. Breathe in, take your arms wide, and then exhale, give yourself a hug with your right arm on top. We're gonna get on into eagle arms this time. So this one where you're crisscrossing your arms and then stepping your feet a bit wider apart. You can take your eagle arms down into a forward bend. So I've got my feet maybe the width of the narrow edge of my mat, sinking into my heels, rolling down into the forward bend, <sighs> letting the head go, letting the arms go, using that extra weight of the crisscrossed, crisscrossed arms to help lengthen out your spine bending your knees as much as you like and at any point you can release your arms give their weight down to the ground and so before you come back up to do the other side make sure you've released your arms sink into your heels roll back up It's quite, it's so good. I seem to be disappearing into, oh, it's brightened up again and soon. Good. Step your feet back so they're a little distance apart. Breathe in, take your arms wide. Exhale, give yourself a hug with the left arm on top and then on into eagle arms on this side. And then stepping the feet a bit wider apart to go forwards in your forward bend. So I just always feel this means there's this space so going forwards bending the knees sinking into the heels there's a sort of space for the elbows between the legs might not be that they they go there but there's that possibility and having a few breaths in this second side of our eagle arms forward then <sighs> using your exhalation if that's helpful to <sighs> release more tension you can release your arms when you like. And then with your arms no longer crisscrossed, sink into your heels, roll back up into standing. When you arrive in standing this time, keep your feet wider apart. So we're gonna come on into a little sequence now where we're thinking about some of these side lengthening movements. So this week when I've been doing this one, where we take one arm up and then the other, I've been thinking about swinging the bottom arm. 
from side to side. So to keep this free movement in it. So we can go from side to side, but I found this really helpful, this sort of side to side swinging of the bottom arm to, I suppose, counteract what can be quite strong through the reaching up side. So yeah, a couple more times side to side. <sighs> bottom arm swinging, good. Maybe it just takes the focus away from that strong stretch through the side of the body, which I always find a bit challenging, particularly on one side. Okay, so hopefully we've balanced ourselves out. I've always completely lost, <laughs> lost the ability to count at this point. Release both arms. And what I'd like you to do now is take your feet a bit wider apart. So if you're facing the short edge of your mat, you need to now face the long edge of your mat. So your feet are still on your mat. So both feet pointing forwards, both feet parallel. We're going to go into this wide forward bend for a couple of breaths and then come up and do a sequence with our feet wide apart. So come forwards into your wide forward bend, sink into your heels. You can of course bend your knees a bit if you like. Keep your weight rooted into your heels. And you can, sometimes it's nice to rest the hands on the ankles or the backs of the hands on the floor or hold your elbows. So just, yeah, whatever feels helpful for you in terms of the arms. And then let a breath come in, sink into your heels, roll back up into standing. And what we're going to do from here, I'm just slightly thinking my feet are a little bit too wide apart. But, um, so if you need to adjust your feet, do. You're going to turn one foot out. You don't have to turn it all the way out to line up with the edge of the mat, but you're turning it out a bit and you're bending that knee over the middle of your foot. So the most important thing is the knee and the foot are in line. And then we float our arms up at shoulder height. So we're coming into our warrior two position. We were doing this a few weeks ago. You can look along the middle finger of your front hand. This is the bent leg hand. Come back here to breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. Just for a couple more cycles of breath. In and out in and out. And we're trying to feel steady below the waist and floaty in the arms. And then from here, we start to lean over the bent leg. We rest our elbow on the bent leg thigh and the other arm reaches over. So again, we're coming to that feeling of lengthening out through the top side of the body. And here, come back to breathing in. I know I am breathing in, breathing out. I know I am breathing out. And again, we're looking for this feeling of steadiness through the legs and this lengthening through the top side of the body. Coming back up on an exhalation, release your arms. And that foot that was turned out, now turn it back in and turn the other foot out. Bending your knee over that foot. So your knee is lined up with the foot. Exhale, float your arms up to shoulder height. If you like, look along that middle finger of your front hand. This is the bent leg hand. And again, this feeling of steady below the waist, floaty arms and shoulders. Breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out in and out, in and out. And then from here, from our warrior two, we can go on into this side lengthening movement. So elbow comes to rest on the bent thigh, reaching our arm up and over, feeling long through the top side of the body, steady through the legs. Coming back to breathing in, I know I am breathing in, breathing out. I know I am breathing out. And then sinking down into your footprints, back up into standing. 
turn your foot that was turned out back to face forwards. And once more, you're going into a wide forward bend. So sinking into your heels, folding forwards, letting your head go, seeing how that feels. Might feel more comfortable the second time. Um, from here, we're going to be, you can stay there for a few breaths if you like it. From there, you're going to be walking your feet in towards each other until they're a smaller distance apart and coming down to the floor through a squat. Yes, and Al, you can do your thing there. <laughs> so um, walking your feet in towards each other coming down to a squat and again if it's good for you to be in a squat for your lower back then you stay there for a few breaths but from here we're going to be coming down and doing a bit of a sort of sitting hip hip opening sequence so you can use your hands to lower yourself onto your bottom and then you're going to lengthen your legs out what long and wide so we've sort of transposed this position from standing into sitting and you can lean back on your hands. You can do a little bit of rolling of your legs in and out. You can do a bit of bouncing of your knees. Just, yeah, how does it feel to be in this wide position? Because we're going to be doing quite a lot of bent leg things. So I thought we'd just have a couple of breaths with our legs long and wide. Slightly more. So it might be from, I think, particularly if you stretch into your heels and spread your toes. Then that often for me means I feel I can then come and sit a bit more upright and possibly even lean forwards. But you know, it might be you'd need more time. More time for these legs to um, uh, that's another thing you can do, slap your legs out a little bit. Okay, so from here, we're going to lean back again and we're going to, without using our feet, bring our feet into cobbler pose. And in this cobbler pose, you can, you can see how it feels to sit upright, but we're going to do a cobbler pose twist. You don't need, I'm just swinging around. So you can see that for the cobbler pose twist, I tend to have my feet a bit further forwards than I would do. I think maybe it just makes it easier to sit upright. And one hand is going to hold on to either an ankle or your big toes and the other fingertips come onto the floor behind you. So you're really using your arms like, I suppose some sort of scaffolding or guy ropes here to try and keep your spine upright as we turn in one direction. Couple of breaths, we don't stay here particularly long. And then turning the other way, turning the other way again, swapping your arms over, using your arms to help keep your spine upright. Make it a bit more easy. Just if our spine's more upright, then we're able to twist a little bit more effectively. Okay, come back to the centre and come on into pinwheel. So let one knee come on top of the other knee and let your top leg slide back. So I thought in as these sort of sitting things today, we would just take a little bit more time use our breathing focuses. So um, a bit of circling here, and then we will come into our pinwheel forward bend when we're ready. So a bit of circling here and then turning to face the thigh that's going out to the side, folding the weight of your body down over that leg. And we're going to come into this forward bend a couple of times. The first time I want you to come to that first focus. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In and out. So how is it in your pinwheel forward bend to settle with this breathing focus? And then what I'd like you to, you might need to walk your hands in a little bit, is I want you to explore in pinwheel, walking your hands over towards your back leg, which can be a little bit challenging, 
and walking your hands back and going past the leg you folded over and walking around. Yeah, beyond that and see, it almost comes to a bit of a twist and how does that feel? So maybe you could do that three times, sort of walking your hands from side to side in pinwheel. And when we come towards the back leg, it brings us into a bit of a side bend in our rib cage and our spine. And when we walk beyond the leg we folded over, it starts to maybe feel a bit more twisty through the spine. So see how these things feel walking from side to side with the hands. And it might be that you, you know, you can't be very low, you have to come up high, particularly when you're walking towards your back leg. And it might feel more comfortable when you're walking beyond the leg we folded over. Or it might all just feel horrible. And then you're going to come back into your pinwheel forward bend. So this is possibly the easiest place to be where then we're folding forwards over that knee that's coming out to the side again. And this time come to your breathing focus where breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. And for two or three more cycles of breath, how does that feel in your forward bend? Breathing in deep, breathing out slow. So maybe one more cycle of breath, deep and slow. And then walking your hands in towards you. And we're gonna go on from here into pigeon pose. So we're going to let this knee that we just folded over move back a little bit. So the thigh lines up with the edge of the mat. And if we lean our weight over that leg, we can then slide the other leg back behind us. And so, you know what works for you in pigeon, whether you can roll your pelvis so that it's level or whether you need to stay a bit off to the side in pigeon. And then just how does it feel to settle in pigeon? Can we connect with our breathing in pigeon? We don't have to do any of the breathing focuses, but can, yeah, can we just be very present with our breath, feel very aware of our breathing to help us settle? If you feel settled in pigeon, there are a couple of little twisty things you can do, which um, I'm sure we've done before, but I'm rather keen on. So if you want to do your little pigeon twists, you come up onto your hands. You don't have to come up particularly far. One hand then stays in the center and you start by reaching back towards your back thigh with the other hand. So I just keep swapping my hands over. So I bring a hand into the center, reach back with the other one and just see how this feels. So you can be leaning onto this hand that's in the center, good. That's sort of stage one of the twists. If that all feels okay, you could try bending your back knee. So when you reach back, you're touching your back foot. Yeah, so that's a possibility. So as you reach back, you're touching your back foot. It might be that you could even catch your back foot and then you sort of pull your back foot back away from you, but you don't have to. It might just be, and you might not want to do that. So reaching towards your back foot. And yes, if you've had enough pigeon, because we are staying a little bit longer in some of these things today, if you've had enough pigeon, do roll out and come out. Um, yes, roll out and... Um, Give your legs a little bit of a length and we're going to be doing obviously doing everything on side two so you can explore those pigeon twists a little bit more if you like that side so from giving your legs a little bit of a roll out then bring your feet back into cobbler pose and in this cobbler pose we'll do a little bit we'll only try a few things we'll do a bit of circling that's one thing that can feel quite good with circling there's rocking this is when we shift our weight from one buttock to the other. And it might be that you discover a whole new way of moving in, in cobbler pose, which you're very welcome to do. So there's rocking. 
And then there's also these um, side lengthening ones, which um, as we've done some other side lengthening things might feel quite nice. I was thinking sometimes these ones feel a bit jack, but actually we've done all those things in standing. Oh, good. Very nice. And then we'll move on to side two of pinwheels. So let one knee come on top of the other knee, going the other way, coming into pinwheel and a bit of circling here. So circling, so the circling helps us to settle and quiet and we're going to, like we did on the other side, we're going to come into our pinwheel forward bend, come to our first breathing focus, then do those little side to side movements and settle in the forward bend again. So it just maybe gives us that opportunity to go a little bit deeper than we do sometimes. So folding over that knee that's going out to the side settling down, gathering your attention into your breathing. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. in and out. And then when you're ready, you can maybe come up a little bit to help with those side to side movements. So where we start to walk our hands towards our back leg and that can feel, it's a sort of side bending movement, it can feel quite challenging. And then we walk our hands back to the leg we folded over, but beyond that leg. So where can we get to walking our hands back? And just maybe three times going from side to side. And yeah, making it as easy for yourself as possible. So if that means coming up higher, coming up higher. If going down lower is helpful. I was thinking as you walk past the leg we fold over, going lower might make it easier. And yes, as you come towards the back leg, often going up higher makes it quite a bit easier. Okay, so just finishing up with that and then we'll come back into our pinwheel forward bend again. So sort of coming back to the middle, folding down over that bent leg. Coming back to the focus of deep and slow. So breathing in my breath grows deep, breathing out my breath goes slowly. Breathing in deep, breathing out slow. And then walking your hands in towards you and we'll come on into pigeon on this side. So letting your leg you just folded over move back a little bit so that knee comes perhaps to line up with the long edge of your mat. If we lean our weight over that leg we can then lengthen the other leg back behind us. Possibly tucking the toes under to walk it back and then untucking got these choices here about how much do you roll your pelvis so that the pelvis is level with the ground how much do you keep your weight offside through the length of your bent leg thigh so you can make those choices for yourself depending on how your your bent knee feels have a few breaths settling in pigeon 
Mm. Sorry, the builders suddenly have chosen this point next door to get very noisy. I'm not sure they're even working. So settling in pigeons for a few cycles of breath. And then if you want to try those pigeon pull and bends on this side, no, sorry, pigeon twists on this side, you can do. So again, it's walking the hands in a little bit. So I keep one hand in the center of the pigeon. It's very easy to start with the hands in the pigeon. So stop pushing them. Bending the back of the pigeon and pushing back towards your foot. But obviously, we've been in pigeon for a while, so if you come out of this position, you might not be able to stand up and do that or do that pigeon twist. I was just a little boy there. Pigeon twist is hard. Yes, that's what we're going to do. I sort of completely lost the plot of where we're going, we're going from here. But I can work that out. So we're rolling out of pigeon. We're lengthening our legs out. So now off they come again. Lengthening our legs out, give them a bit of a roll. And then what I'd like you to do before we lie down is we're just going to sit for a little bit of breathing. So find a comfortable sitting position. So it could be kneeling, it could be, if you want to sit with your legs long, either yeah, long and wide, you could have your back against a sofa or a wall. So just a, however can you however you can sit most comfortably just for maybe a couple of minutes. Come to your feet. Yes, let's go. We've got Otto coughing. Otto is having homeopathic treatment at the moment to try and sort out his cough. Clearly, not maybe it's worked as well as I was hoping. So when you settle down, however you're going to sit, what I suggest you do is you do a little bit of rocking or swaying or circling to help you settle down. So if I'm kneeling, I tend to like to rock a bit. If I'm sitting cross-legged, maybe more circling. So just a, yeah, a little bit of movement. A little bit of movement that we can quieten down. So gently, you know, gradually from swaying or rocking, you come to settle. And you can rest your hands on your thighs, either palms down or palms up. Maybe just start with a big sighing breath or two to help you settle and drop your shoulders. <sighs> Then come to that first breathing focus. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. Then for two or three cycles of breath, in and out, in and out. And then for the second breathing focus, the deep and slow, I thought it's quite helpful to bring your hands onto your low ribs. So I've got my thumbs going around towards the back of my rib cage and my fingers around towards the front. And so breathing in, my breath grows deep. We feel those low, low ribs wide in hands. And breathing out, my breath goes slowly. We feel ourselves narrowing around the middle. So just stay perhaps here for another two or three cycles of breath, deep and slow. And we feel these low ribs widening and narrowing with the deep inhalation and the slow exhalation.
give you one more cycle of breath, breathing in, my breath grows deep, breathing out, my breath goes slowly. And then you're going to lie down. We're just going to do a couple of simple movements and a little bit more breathing lying down. So you might want to put on warm things now. So what I was going to suggest is if you settle on your backs with your knees bent, we're going to repeat what we did at the beginning. So nice, particularly if you miss it, we're going to rub the palms together, bring the palms over the eyes. And a little bit of rolling the head from side to side, if you like. So yes, palms over the eyes, so we give our eyes that chance to rest, bathed in the darkness. And then settling the head in the centre. You can keep your palms over your eyes or you can let your arms come to rest on the floor. And then letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. Good, and then settling down. You can keep the knees bent, or if you prefer, you can lengthen your legs out. And bring your hands to rest on the front of your body. So gathering your attention into your breathing. And one last time we'll go through those two breathing focuses just briefly and I'm going to add a third one in for a couple of cycles of breath. So breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. in and out. Breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. Deep and slow. And then breathing in, I smile. So let yourself smile, it relaxes your face. Breathing out, I release. And that can be releasing or physical tension from your body or whatever it is you need to let go of. Maybe there's two or three more cycles of breath. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Smile, release. In a moment, I'm going to ring the singing bowl, but don't leap up because there's one last movement I'd like us to do on our backs. So what 
we're going to finish with is bending the knees if your legs are long, standing your feet on the floor, crossing your arms over your chest. And this love, well, I always think it's lovely, this lovely rocking movement where we're rocking from side to side, elbows, head and knees, all rocking in the same direction, going from side to side. And of course, this can take you over onto your side and up and into the rest of your day. But there's no rush. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. So we have a two week break now.